guys welcome back to my channel as promised in this video I'm going to tell you what to write and what not to write in your uh, resume in uh, to get a job in Japan uh, I'm not telling you that I am an expert in uh, resume writing or I'm an HR but uh, I do have a, a lot of experience in writing resumes and also um, rarely do I take interviews in my company as well so I know exactly what an interviewer wants from you and what especially what the Japanese interviewer wants from you so um, you can take it as a tip out of my experience so uh, don't come back to me and say oh we wrote uh, according to what you said but we didn't crack the job interview because resume is not the only thing uh, that is a, uh, that cracks a job interview some you must have the qualities as well that's the first thing so having an impressive resume and not having any skills and qualifications so will not get you a job okay having said that uh, let's start uh, so how to write a resume so uh, everybody who are in Japan you already know uh, that you will get a standard format uh, that uh, a template that you can buy from uh, the com convenience store or the uh, Hayakuen also Daiso also sells those uh, resumes or you go to a stationery store or a bookstore and buy a resume now there are various kinds of resume make sure you buy one for the permanent workers uh, full-time workers not the ones for part-time because when you send a part-time workers uh, resume template to, to for a full-time work um, it doesn't look nice and the interviewer uh, employer itself is uh, the HR itself gets pissed off that this guy he doesn't even know the difference between a part-time job and a full-time job so make sure you get the resume uh, that says that is applicable for full-time job so first you need to buy that form from uh, from the shop okay so once you got the form the next step is writing the resume so if you open the form you will see that you have a um, um, page uh, with a lot of details uh, that are required and also additional pages to write your job um, description and job qualifications uh, experiences so if you have an additional page to write your job experiences then you have the uh, correct uh, template to, to write your resume redirect show okay so start with writing your personal details which is on the left hand side uh, corner your name your phone number but some people uh, don't give information like uh, email address they leave out the email address or kinkyu renraku saki there would be a place where uh, they will ask for the name and the phone number or the address of the person in case of any emergency where can they contact you there is a resume uh, template like that so if those uh, if that is the one you bought you make sure you fill up every field in the pers personal details section okay don't leave any fields blank because once you leave a field blank that means there is a, it doesn't look nice again it doesn't look nice and uh, if I was the interviewer I would think that this guy does not pay attention to details like it's completely written that you have to give all this information yet he has not provided this information so uh, it's very important that you fill up the personal details it's just a short and uh, the photograph photograph don't give a photograph with a t-shirt on or uh, with any other formal clothes on make sure it is uh, you you look very clean no beard and all that if you're a male and if you're a female tie your hair, hair up tight even if you're looking even if your face is looking big uh, make sure you uh, dress like the Japanese graduates uh, university graduates who wear black suits and they tie up their hair and wax them and all that so that your face is clearly seen and uh, black suit is a must don't put uh, put uh, paste photographs uh, which has like you know t-shirts and all that which is like you don't want to spend money just for the heck of it don't do that because uh, your photograph uh, your resume goes first to the HR uh, your resume equal you so first you send your resume and then you follow for the interview so uh, make sure you give a good uh, photograph with a black suit on they just they just love black suit okay okay so the photograph and the personal details section is very easy don't uh, leave any gaps okay and if you don't have any kinky or rakusaki uh, you can give your um, you give emergency phone numbers of your name of your parents and um, uh, plus eight one uh, uh, sorry plus nine one and give the emergency number of your father or mother but don't leave it blank that's what i want to say okay so that's one then comes the educational qualifications now don't start writing from a uh, nursery school nobody is interested start from writing uh, from high school so you start writing uh, a uh, this and this school 
uh, Nusha, like you first write the date, then you write this in this school, and then you write Nusha. Nusha means you joined the school on that day. High school I'm talking about. So even, uh, it, you you know the educational system, Japanese educational system and uh, Indian education system is different. They have a different school for high school, and they have a different school for primary and uh, secondary. So just make sure whichever high school you have passed out from class 11 and 12 you write the name of that school and then you write the nusha the date of join uh, the join and then the next line followed by the same thing but you just write the graduation date when you graduated from the high school and then you write the name of the school and then you write the new um, sotsugyo okay so you write so to so you see the line uh, the educational qualification will be like this this date this is the name of the school, Nusha. This date, this is the name of the school, Sotsugyo. Then next comes university. This date, this is the name of the university, Nusha. This date, this is the name of the university, Sotsugyo. So you are giving the Nusha date and the Sotsugyo date. Nusha date, Sotsugyo date. And also the Japanese language school, Nusha. And then uh, Sotsugyo date, Sotsugyo. Japanese language school, Sotsugyo. So you have to write it in two lines, you know. If you write it in two lines, that gives a very good impression to the uh, interviewer that this person has uh, common sense and he has attention to details, okay. So this is one thing that you have write, you have to write. And then if you see that this uh, front, uh, the qual educational qualification section is getting filled up, it's very good. It gives a good impression that you're very, uh, you know, stu you study hard and uh, you have uh, gained enough knowledge. Okay, that's it. Then comes your shokureki, which is your um, job qualification. Uh, so uh, even if you have done a part-time job, obviously, uh, if you're a fresh graduate and all that, you don't have any qualification. But, you know, in Japan, if you don't have any qualification and if you start as a fresher, the Japanese companies don't pay you money. They don't pay you a good salary or a decent salary. They pay you very less. less. That happens to Japanese students also. So that is the reason uh, the Japanese students, when they uh, pass out the university, uh, they look for they look for uh, many jobs and then they finally settle into one job because they know they are fresher. They have to at least uh, work in that company for minimum three to five years, gain uh, five years experience, and then change the company so that they can negotiate their salary with the second company. Japanese companies never give good salary to freshers. So, if you have done a part-time job, I'm sure you will be doing a part-time job. So, make sure you fill up your, or if you have done any job in India, you have to write that. And how to write that? Say, for example, you did some, you worked in a call center in India. So, the same way you wrote the educational qualifications, the same way you will have to write uh, this and this date. This is the name of the company, Nusha, joined. And then the second line you write, this is the date and this is the name of the company. And you retired or resigned or whatever the reason due to medication, medical problems, whatever it is, the reason. Okay. And write it in short. After you write that, you make sure you elaborate everything that you did in that company. What happens in Japan is uh, like uh, you must, you might have gone for a different uh, job, which is very different from your major, but you have gone for the interview, but your employer is thinking in his mind, okay, so she has come for this interview, but I will use her uh, in this also, that also, and this also because she has this skill, that skill, and this skill. Okay. Say, for example, just an example, you have a driving license and uh, uh, but you're going for an interview of um, import export manager. But uh, your uh, your interviewer is thinking at the back of his mind, OK, uh, I can use this guy to transfer uh, certain um, parts from this branch to that branch so he can be useful to me. So he's thinking a completely different thing. So make sure you write everything in details, whatever you've done. I'll give you a small example. Say, for example, if you're a fresher, you, you did a part-time job. Say you were a waiter in a restaurant, okay? So if you, obviously, you wouldn't write, I used to pick up plates and I used to serve the uh, food and I used to clean up the table and uh, my uh, work was night shift. No, you don't write all these things. Like, this is what you're thinking that you, what will I write as a part-timer, as a waiter? You can frame your sentences in such a way that makes it feel that you had a huge responsibility in the service industry. For example, you can say Japanese hospitality. 
and then you explain providing uh, Japanese hospitality as per the customer's expectations, maintaining good relationships with customers to build a loyal customer base, and then maintaining hygiene standards in the company uh, as per the industry standards uh, so that uh, people don't fall ill. These kind of things like you were explaining uh, the responsibilities of a waiter you have to maintain hygiene you have to maintain cleanliness if you're working in a restaurant right so you're you're stating that your your responsibility was to maintain the hygiene standards as per the industry standards right and then building relationship with the customers of course when you were serving the food and uh, they were giving you tips or if they even if they were not giving you tips but you were conver having a conversation with the customer so these are the professional kind of approach that you must have even if you're uh, just a waiter you can make the work of a waiter look very fancy and that is what uh, you know impresses uh, interviewer it's not that if you write i used to clean up the dishes and all that nobody gives a shit but if you write i uh, maintain hygiene standards as per the japanese industry standards oh it's a big thing that means you know more than just cleaning up the uh, table restaurant table that means you know that you have to maintain the hygiene standards and that means you know that japan has a standard like this so it's very important that you write you frame your sentences in such a way even if it part if it's part-time job i frame your sent sentences in such a way that uh, you know it becomes a big thing it becomes fancy oshare you know kazadi you have to make it uh, beautiful like you have to make it sound beautiful sometimes you have to become a poet for that and how will you know what to write okay these are the things that you have to make a little bit effort on how to write all these things first you have to think out of the box like all these things you search the internet there are many cvs available in internet and many resumes available in the internet so look through them search them study spend your time looking through the resumes and you will get your answer so how to frame it and all that a little bit of effort should be important on your part as well so that is how you write your uh, experience uh, job experiences like you make a big deal out of even if it was a small job so that's very important and uh, also when you when an employer uh, when an interviewer or an employer is looking at your cv they will see from which date to which date you have worked even if you have mentioned your part-time job right in this restaurant they will see uh, this guy has worked in a part-time job for how what is the duration of her uh, service so if it is like three months and then again next i worked in a factory two months happened to me so i stopped writing my job experiences uh, part-time job experiences in my cv because i changed many jobs when i was in a language school so don't write that if you if you have worked in a company for a short while don't write that in your cv i'm talking about part-time jobs of course full-time jobs better not to write okay so that's why i tell you when you get a job a part-time job when you join the school try to stick to it for at least one or two years because that's what uh, the when you look go to look for a work permit and you go to look for a permanent job that's what the employer is looking at is this guy hopping skipping from one company to another or is this guy loyal to one company with all the even if there is hardships in the same company he is still sticking around which means he is loyal and loyalty is a very big thing for the japanese people i mean they enter one they just join one company when they're 19 years 21 years old and then they retire from that company that is their aim uh, for every Japanese so it's a very orthodox way of thinking so make sure if you have long duration of work experience you mention them otherwise um, it gives you a bad impression that this guy cannot be trusted he's not loyal okay then you wrote your all your job experiences this way and then comes a section where you have to write your appeal point you know there will be a section where you have to write your appeal point so how to frame sentences in your appeal point uh, to make it sound very professional like when i uh, i know in japanese language schools and all that uh, they the sensei is very dramatic in the sense they are very sensei boy so they will always tell uh, bridging the gap between japan and uh, india like becoming a um, hashi between japan and india those are very old and outdated things uh, in a job interview 
that's a very mm, childish way of writing a resume. Uh, I want to bridge the gap. I want to be the bridge between Japan and India and all that. No, don't write all those things. Be a bit more professional. So what can you write? Write something like, I have a long working history in so-and-so company and I can assure you that I will be loyal to your institution or company as well. This is one thing that you can appeal. It's a big appeal point, being loyal to one company, a loyal worker, okay? And then you can write, um, you can also write like, uh, I am able to sustain uh, work pressure uh, no matter what happens. I am able to sustain the work pressure and uh, I can, uh, uh, I don't give up easily. So, which is the reason I stick with the company for a long time. So, in one shot, you're giving them the, that you can sustain the pressure, work pressure, as well as you're giving them uh, the loyalty uh, thing. Uh, so, now, these are the kind of things that you write. You don't write, I want to be a, a, a bridge between Japan and India. Like, so what? How? People normally, when I am an interviewer, I think if this person will be able to sustain the time, work pressure and if this person uh, will be loyal, will be staying for a long time, sticking around for a long time. The rest of the thing, I will train them. So they don't need to worry about that. Every company trains their employees. So they don't need to worry about the training part. So they know once I hire this person, I can train this person according to my requirements. So that's not a big deal. The big deal is whether you have the qualities of uh, sustaining the pressure, work pressure, and whether you have the qualities of being a loyal uh, worker. These are very important for uh, cracking a job interview. So make sure you do um, lots of searches on the internet, see your resumes and all that, see other resumes and all that, not Japanese, I'm talking about English resumes. Uh, look through the English resumes and make a very impressive resume. I'm sorry, I've got a sore throat. Uh, very impressive resume that you think, yeah, this is a very impressive resume, okay? And also there will be a section where you have to write your hobbies or extra curriculum. Uh, please make sure you mention, even if you're, you were playing football or rugby, or if you know skateboarding, or if you have a driver's license, or if you have, uh, uh, if you can operate uh, MS office, uh, or you, if you can type Japanese, all these things you mentioned over there. Because like I told you previously, uh, you are mentioning these things, but your employer is thinking something else. Okay, I can use this guy for this job and that job. Okay, so that is also very important. So, so in a way, you're sending yourself in the form of a redirect show to the company you're looking for, uh, you're aspiring to get a job from and you're aspiring to get them uh, sponsor your uh, work permit. So this is how you write a redirect show and make sure you uh, pay attention to details. Don't leave anything uh, empty because as an interviewer, I don't like anything empty. Like I, I want to know everything about you, not personal but your um, educational qualification and your uh, job uh, experiences. So uh, make sure you don't put any blanks and all that. Like, you know, if you have a five year gap between one job and another, make sure it's better you don't mention the first job at all. Just mention the second job so that you don't have to answer why there was a gap, five year gap between two jobs. Okay. And if you have a valid reason, like you were studying in between, then it's a good reason like you you joined one job and then you took up your studies you pursued your studies because you wanted to skill up and then you joined the second job that's a very good thing that's very impressive but uh, you have done nothing in between you were just playing around don't write this write this okay so these are common sense and these things you have to search the internet and you have to think out of the box you have to communicate with people so all these things if you're a student you won't be able to write in the exact professional language that an interviewer is expecting so first write uh, prepare your cv in english uh, and if you're satisfied like if you think yeah i have prepared an impressive cv in english you go to a japanese who knows a little bit of english and japanese and then you request them to translate that cv for you because even japanese people write their redirect shows so if they see all these things in your redirect show it's very easy for them to write at least the educational qualifications and your job uh, job experiences it's very easy for them to write and understand uh, and uh, you know because they're already experienced in giving um, in writing redirect shows uh, all that they're writing is what what your 
a little bit different but it's not as it's a standard format so get help from a japanese because if you don't get help from a japanese uh, your redex show will look like a childish a child's redex show uh, as an interviewer nobody would like to see a redex show which is not impressive like i i i wouldn't like to see so um, make sure uh, you get help and sometimes if you don't know any japanese you can go to a professional service a uh, professional translation service there are many companies who translate uh, who give translation services so you can pay them and get a nice redex show in japanese it's very important that your redex show is very very impressive in japanese why because we are aiming i am asking you to aim at a job uh, which can give you a decent salary from the beginning so for that your redex show must be very very good otherwise you won't be able to uh, negotiate okay and uh, that is all about the redex show and uh, all the best uh, if you don't have anybody you can ask uh, you can pay the japanese professional service and get your redex show done but the first effort has to come from you so first you have to make the redex show in english okay guys so see you in my next video which is how to find a job in halo work bye bye